Hey, it's Dave Salvadore, Blue Line Design. Thanks for coming back for part five in the Big Blood Bowl build series. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how I created the skull icon that is in the center of the field. So let's get right into that. I'm gonna make the skull icon old school by sculpting it, molding it, and casting it. So I start with a piece of Formica countertop material. This is a good board to sculpt on as well as mold make on. I'm going to be using an oil-based plastilina sculpting clay as well as various sculpting tools. I'm using the original printout as a guide to figure out how big to make this thing and to get all the measurements drawn out onto the board. Plastilina clay can be really hard to work with, so I am chopping up pieces of it so that it'll soften up and make it easier to sculpt with. Once I have a basic layer of clay onto the board, I take a metal scraping tool. It's kind of flat on one side and a rake on the other, and I quickly level it out. So the challenge with this sculpt is obviously that it is symmetrical. You're only gonna be able to do that so well because you're not a robot. One of the easiest things that I've learned to do is to quickly scribe in with a tool. You're almost drawing where things are gonna go and this gives you a good bearing of where to sculpt things. And this fire alarm happened to be the perfect size circle to mark out where the logo is eventually gonna go. One of the challenges with this sculpture was to not over sculpt it. I had to remind myself that this is a bas relief sculpture. It's to give a little bit of dimension, but ultimately miniatures are going to be gaming on top of this thing. And periodically you'll see me brushing on 99% alcohol to help smooth out the surface. Now, originally I had tried to sculpt the teeth. This became a real challenge. I knew better, but I thought, oh, I could just sculpt this out really quick. I'll show you how I fix this problem later. Now, obviously sculpting isn't like digital where you can just transform things or undo. It takes a lot more time. I realized here that the proportions were off on the face. So I cut the lower part of the teeth and move them down physically. And here I'm marking out where the logo is going to eventually be merged in with the sculpture. So here I am struggling with trying to sculpt those teeth. It was time for an extraction and for me to share with you guys the right way I should have done it from the beginning. This is a good trick for whenever you're trying to sculpt in teeth or claws or even eyeballs into sculptures where you need to sculpt around them. You want to first create them out of something that's a hard material. So I take a Pyrex pan and put it over top of the printout of the skull and use that as a guide to sculpt the teeth out of Super Sculpey. After I finish sculpting the teeth, I bake them in the oven at 275 for about 15 minutes. Once the teeth were baked, I took this two-part easy mold silicone putty. It's a very simple putty that you mix 50-50, and then I can take a quick cast off of the teeth to make a copy for the other side of the skull. Once that sets up, I carefully peel it off, and then I can press Sculpey now into this to make a copy of the teeth. So after the teeth were baked, they kind of broke apart a little bit. Not a big deal. I just stick them on there and crazy glue them together. Now I can sculpt the gums around the teeth without messing them up. A good way to smooth out the clay is to use black stipple sponges. These are actually for makeup. Uh, they act like little rakes that you can use the different grains of the texture to smooth it down. With the sculpture getting close to done, 
the last challenge was to figure out how to get the logo incorporated into the sculpture. So I ordered from Alt Reality Terrain a 3D print of the logo. The lady that runs the company, Angie, is so fantastic to work with. She actually found the 3D file and printed up both of these options for me. In order to make the surface of the logo a little bit more playable friendly, I filled in the deep parts of the recesses of the logo with some clay. Now the logo is ready to blend in to the rest of the skull sculpture. The spikes on the logo got buried in the clay, so I ended up cutting off the spikes and then re-sculpting them out of Sculpey. I finished the sculpt with a little bit of tinfoil ball texture and black stipple sponge. It was now ready to mold. Spraying the sculpture with crystal clear will help bubbles from getting stuck in the cracks. I'm going to be making a very simple silicone mold, so I take some pieces of foam board to create the frame. I make the thickness of the mold about a half of an inch all the way around it, and then I hot glue my foam board frame to the board. To make the mold, I'm gonna use Mold Star 15 Slow, which is a two-part silicone. You just measure out a 50-50 mix, mix it together really well, and pour it on. I let the silicone cure overnight, and then carefully demolded it. It turned out great. There were very few bubbles in it. Before casting, it's a good idea to clean out your mold with a little bit of alcohol. To cast the skulls, I used a two-part resin called Smooth Cast 65D. Again, you just mix a 50-50 mix into a cup. I poured in a small batch to get out the bubbles and get in all the details. After that setup, I backfilled it with another batch. Once that cured, I demolded it. It turned out great. I was really happy with it. I cast one for each side of the field so that I would have a dungeon version and the grass field version. I put the skulls onto the field so that I could trace out the grid so that it would line up just right. I then used a Dremel to carve in the lines for the grid system. I tried to keep them very subtle because I didn't want to disrupt the whole look of the skull, but you still have to have something there for when you're gaming. After priming them, I did a quick wash on it so that you guys could see the details that came through in the final casting. So here are the final skull icons ready to be embedded into the fields on the board. This was the hardest part of the build for me to figure out and I'm really happy with the final results. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified of the next video, hit the bell icon. And until next time, keep drawing, keep designing.